It's very strange. We didn't, we hadn't met yet. Very strange. Yes. I, I was always thinking, you know, I want to call her <laughs> to tell her how much I love her films. <laughs> and we've been together in the same places yes. at times, but Many nobody times. even introduced no. us. Also, because when there is like these big ceremonies, no, it's so yeah. hard to kind of have like a quality conversation. So, yeah. So you always knew you wanted to be an actress or like since a kid? Well, I knew that I loved acting yeah. because when I was about four, mm -hmm. when I was playing with my, my grandmother's neighbor's son, yeah. I realized that this thing that we were doing, playing, pretending to be somebody else, was acting. Yes. And I got like this huge dopamine high, mm -hmm. and I, I was four, and I remember feeling okay, and thinking, this is what I want to do. This is yeah. acting. And I was, I was not going to a theater school, but I was doing classical ballet mm -hmm. for all those years, for 17 years. Mm -hmm. So until I was a teenager, I was putting all that, necessity uh, to create, to play characters, to, to, to research characters. Uh, I had that covered through my relationship with ballet. Mm. But when I was 13, uh, 12, 13, I had already seen a lot of movies that I had yeah. become obsessed with and a lot of performances that mm -hmm. I, was, I would watch 20 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And I would not go to play with my friends after school. If I mm -hmm. was not dancing, I was renting films mm -hmm. to watch and study those films. And I knew there was something there that could give me a lot of happiness in the future. Yeah, yeah. But it, to my family, it sounded like completely like science fiction because yes. we didn't have anybody uh, in our family or circle of friends. We didn't know anybody who could make a living Mm. Uh, out of something related to art. Yeah. So it was new there. <laughs> it was it was like saying, Mom, Dad, I want to be an astronaut, you know, in, in that time <laughs> for a girl to say that. And But they support. They didn't laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't invalidate me. So I thought, okay, they're telling me that it's going to be hard, close to impossible, but... Hmm. There is maybe a little, like, a 2% of possibilities, or maybe more, I didn't know, but they're not laughing at me, mm -hmm. so I will try. Yeah. And I will always be grateful for that. And then I started thinking, why don't I look for an agent? Why don't I go to a theater school? And maybe I can do both. Mm -hmm. Then when I started working as an actress, and to my surprise, I got some uh, positive responses in the yeah. castings, then I realized later that I had to choose between... Mm. Uh, dancing and acting, that it was not possible to do both. And was it a difficult choice or it was, you it? was it? a sad decision yeah. because <clears throat> I was dancing like four hours a day. I was studying in the, during the day. Then in the evening I was dancing until 8 or 9 p.m. every mm. day. And, and then there was a point where I... I almost had like a crisis from working so much at that yeah. age. You know, I was still young, a teenager, yeah. so I didn't know. I didn't know when to stop. I think it's so powerful, no? Like this, this, this idea of people understanding a country through films, even if you haven't been there, no. And also, there is something I feel now because we are talking a lot about how there is a lot of films set in a rural world, no, in Spain. Like and both of your films? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and many people are saying, like, w what's happening with that? As if it was a new, th new thing. But I feel that it's not like that, you know, like Spanish had had mm. a long tradition of a film set in a rural world because it's a very rural country at the end, no? But I think that there is some kind of interesting uh, difference in the moment that we live in now is that I feel that the cinema became a little bit more democratic so more people mm -hmm. uh, can make films, no? So people like middle class people who grew up in a village and maybe went to study outside or even like outside of Spain, no? Go back to our small villages and tell the stories in the places where we grow up, no? So mm -hmm. where we grew up, and this is, I think it's very interesting because it's a way to talk about this rural um, part of Spain, but from the inside, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. But 
But it's true that that has been a, a huge part of our cinema. Yeah. I mean, Berlanga, Buñuel, also Pedro, with his yeah. relationship with La Mancha, mm. seen from so many different points of views. I think, like, all the great directors in, Have in our country. Yeah. It's a natural thing at the end, no? Because mm. I think that our country is very rural, even if we are in another moment of rurality, mm. no? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, with the small villages that... Um, that, uh, well, are disappearing, some of them, no? Yes, that's why Alcaraz is so touching for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because you never force anything, but it breaks your heart, you know? <laughs> because the way you were talking about the danger of you know, those um, rural area, areas mm-hmm. disappearing or being hurt, um, I mean, it, it could not be told with more truth and more poetry <laughs> and I feel like there are very few directors like you <laughs> because you let things breathe mm-hmm. there is a rhythm there is like a different pulse and to really take the audience there you have to be able to be as brave as you are <laughs> to let things breathe let people talk on top of each other. People don't talk in life like now you talk and then you answer and then you, especially in our country, there's not the <laughs> <Yes>. way. <laughs> to feel that, that this is a piece of life that you put mm. there, that is not easy. You have to be so brave to be mm. able to, to not be afraid of mm, mm. This, this, this rhythm that... that it, Es como el pez que se muere de la cola. ¿Cómo mm-hmm. se dice esto? In English? Like the fish that eats the, the tail. Its like, own tail. <laughs> yes, yes, because yeah. we complain about mm-hmm. like this crazy rhythm that society is imposing, but at the same time we are creating it. And I feel like when there is an yeah. artist like you that says, hold on, I'm going to take this story, but mm-hmm. th- for you to understand what it is to be there and to go through these experiences, you have to come to my rhythm <laughs> and and yeah. have this experience no thank you <laughs> no but it's true that for me it's a, it's not only on my films it's more my philosophy you know like mm. i think that also in the in when it comes to how many films you have to make you know and what we were talking about now that you just do one or two per year because you want to also live and i think that it's very important to keep living yeah. if we are telling stories because if you get totally disconnected from life how are you going to tell a story you know it's so hard yes. so for me like this part of not rushing any creative process is very important and sometimes i feel like i'm fighting against the world because everything was so fast <laughs> I have to make sure that whatever I'm writing and whatever I'm preparing is ready, no? And in the case for Alcaraz, even if this it portrays my, my mom's village, no? Mm-hmm. But and my uncles cultivate peaches in this village and all this, but I still it needed a lot of research and it allowed me to spend a lot of time with my family there, investigate as you know, as much as I wanted. And all this process is also obviously reflected in the film but it's also my personal Mm -hmm. process that I'm curious about that I want to live this for me making films is an opportunity to live things that I wouldn't otherwise Mm -hmm. no so so the process is as as important as the the result for me too Mm -hmm. for me too and when I was doing four movies per year imagine yeah I had no life my life was from one character to the next and there was a point where I felt like I haven't experienced anything on my own in those years mm. that was not from set to set to set. Yeah. But that that changed like uh, 13 years ago, 14 mm-hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. because I was also missing being able to choose the projects that I want to be part, uh, part mm. of. And without that, it's only like you are going to live half of the experience. Well, the thing is that for me, if, if you don't dedicate a lot of time to a project and you put your soul in it somehow. It, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to do it, honestly, you know, because then it becomes like some kind of, I don't know, job, a <laughs> normal job. Yes, no? yes, yes, yes. And for me, filmmaking is not a job. I mean, yes, of course, I live out of it, but mm. it's uh, a lot more, no? So it means a lot. For me, making a film, it's almost like a ritual somehow, no? So it, yeah. it has to do with... Uh, telling something that I need to express and discovering things mm-hmm. that I need to discover and investigate, no? And I think that this idea of experiment and investigate 
is also also needs time, no? Because mm -hmm. it means that sometimes you are trying to do something that you don't know where it's going to go, no? Yeah, and you don't know how mm -hmm. much time you will need yeah. until you are, you are maybe in the middle of it. Yeah, and, and until you say, okay, now I think I have it, no? So I think that mm -hmm. this idea of like seeing... Uh, I don't know, filmmaking like a process that needs time and that it's like research somehow, mm. no? That it's something that, uh, so I think it's very easy to say, but then it's more difficult to kind of protect, no? When you yes. are making it. Yes. Also because I see filmmaking as a collabor collaborative art, no? Mm. So sometimes I like to kind of ask my, you no, know, the people I work with, like, what do you think, no? So let, let's discuss this. But now, like... We try to make films in a very, and, and, and TV shows and all this in a very fast way, no? So sometimes mm. there's a space to think on set. It's not so common. Mm. And, and I talked a lot about that with my producer, no? Because it's something that I think I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been able to, to do Alcaraz if it I'm wasn't sure. because of the time we had. I like when you feel that there is life happening in the film. Yeah, you, no? you made that happen in every single shot. There is mm -hmm. nothing, there is not a single moment where you feel, hmm, that is forced, that is, mm -hmm. that is not on the level of everything. Else. No, it's yeah. just pure truth. Yes. No, and I like looking for that, but I think that sometimes this goes with kind of losing control, no? And I'm mm -hmm. a very controlling person. <laughs> of course, I'm a director, no? But I put myself in situations where I feel that, okay, this, I'm, I'm not going to be able to control, so life will come up, yes. <laughs> no? You're sorry, I know everybody is asking you this. What's next about for me? your next movie? Yeah, no, um, well, I'm preparing a film that um, I feel it, it kind of closes the trilogy about families, <laughs> no, about my families. And it, uh, it talks about family memory. Because, mm. you know, as you know, my parents died when I was a kid. So I don't have access of, of all my family memory. And this is mm. something that I'm always so worried about, no? Like what happens when you cannot ask the people you, you should ask yes, through your parents? I imagine. You know, about your family history, you know? And now that I had a kid, it's even more important for me to kind of... I think sometimes that I make films just to kind of live like these stories for my children no? somehow yes. um, but um, I'm very excited also because obviously it will I think it will definitely have the tone of my other films but there is a part that uh, it's a little bit more let's say dreamy somehow mm -hmm. no? so there is it's some challenge there to, mm -hmm. to kind of experiment as a new thing for me <laughs> I think that is not going to be a challenge for you because there is so <laughs> much magic in your films mm -hmm. and what about you? For me, I have a Ferrari coming yeah. out. I did it uh, with uh, Michael Mann, mm -hmm. who is an incredible, incredible director, as we all know. But to see him in action is like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody with more energy. Yeah. So we have to decide what movie we're gonna do together, yeah, and then sure. that will <laughs> I'm up be for a it. great thing. <laughs> if we had two more hours, we would come up with something. No, actually, before you leave, I have something to tell you. Okay, okay, so that's good. <laughs> life is very interesting. Yes, always. <laughs>